Good morning, everybody. Hey, welcome to this second of July, heading into the third quarter. Um, we have uh, had some political debate. We've had uh, the markets up, the markets down. What will the third quarter leave us with? Who knows? But we'll look and dive into it throughout the quarter to see what's happening. Glad you're with us today. And uh, we got Dave coming up next. Before we do that, though, let's not forget that there are so many things in this world you and I, we have no control over. However, you can take control of your investment portfolio by knowing the amount of risk you have in that portfolio versus the amount of risk you should have in that portfolio versus, based on your current circumstances. Hey, give me a call at 863-382-0037 to schedule your core retirement analysis. With that, we got Dave coming up next. Oh, five. Point seven light FM. You too. Me too. Him too as well. We're all here together again. Now, time to check in on your finances and see what's going on on Wall Street this morning. Two or four your money. The him I'm talking about is Philip Statler, who's back with us from Statler Financial Services in downtown Sebring. Philip, good morning. How you doing? Hey, good morning, Dave. I'm doing well. Had a good week off. I uh, got to spend some time with the grandkids, and uh, and so that was good. And but back at the office this week. Well, of course, kind of a short week, right? We got uh, Wednesday off. I mean, uh, Thursday off. So it feels for all the world like it's Thursday today because I know that everything is going to be shut down on the real calendar Thursday. It's a weird week. We shut down early tomorrow on Wall Street, then close for all day on Thursday, and then come back for. One day on Friday, and on Friday, the federal government dumps all the employment information on us. So we get the ADP report tomorrow if it's on schedule, and we're going to get to trade on that for a half a day, and then all heck is going to break loose. I'm just guessing, guessing about noon tomorrow, there's going to be either a little tail up or down on the indexes, depending upon what the private sector employment report looks like. Wouldn't you bet that? I think so. People will be ready to uh, get out and uh, start their celebration for the 4th of July. I expect so. And I, I saw it at the end of last week with all the weird stuff going on after the debate last week and the uncertainty as to what's going on in Washington. Uh, the last half hour of trading on Wall Street on Friday was everybody took money off the table in a hurry. Don't want to take a chance on anybody screwing with their money over the weekend. And I got a sneaking hunch over the 4th of July we're going to see something very similar happen. Yesterday, uh, for the first day of the third quarter, we're one for one with a win. Dow was up by 50 points. S&P was up by 14 and a half. NASDAQ was up eight-tenths of a percent, up 147 points. It could have been a lot better, though, because about 10 o'clock construction spending went out. Dow fell by 340 points, and then about a half an hour of that. I gather that was not a good report, huh? It really wasn't, Dave. The expectation was construction spending was supposed to be uh, booming and going up by about two-tenths of a percent. However, it actually went down minus a tenth of a percent. So uh, there was a little contraction in the uh, construction spending area, and I'm sure that that weighed on the markets yesterday. Yeah, there was a big knee downward on all of the indexes right about 10 o'clock when that report came out, and i got to assume that had something to do with it because there was a profound reaction to a report that kind of went the opposite way anybody expected. i got to throw this out because I've always been tracking what all the big brokerage firms are saying the Standard & Poor's 500 is going to end up the year at. Well, we've got a company called Capital Economics that put out a projection for next year for the Standard & Poor's 500, and they're saying that uh, artificial intelligence optimism could boost the Standard & Poor's 500 past 7,000 next year. Not this year. Next year. Um, somebody's got a really good crystal ball out there, wouldn't you think? Yeah, really. Uh, and talking about crystal ball, I mean, talking about construction spending, I want to bring this up, Dave. Uh, oh, because yeah. both D.R. Horton and Lennar Corporation got downgraded to neutral um by uh, by by Citibank. And so uh, I'm pretty sure that probably weighed in too. Um they're down about 2% this morning um on that downgrade. That would be enough to drag the S&P down with a couple of the big uh 
home builders that are publicly traded as well. Yeah, pretty much stayed relatively flat after that down tick yesterday at 10 a.m., and uh, we never really got back up to the nosebleed levels that we were playing with earlier at the time. It's going to be an incredibly busy week this week, uh, except Thursday, obviously, because it's employment week. A little later on this morning, we're going to get the JOLTS report with expected uh, job openings, and they're expecting it to be down considerably from the prior month, which in our good news is bad news scenario, that ought to give the Federal Reserve some uh, reinforcement that the job economy is finally slowing down a little bit, wouldn't you expect? I think so. I mean, the expectation is uh, for about 7.9 million job openings, that would be about 200,000 less than what we had last month. And if you think back to uh, what we saw back in, in 21 and maybe even 22, I mean, that, that JOLS report was up around 10, 11 million. So, um, you know, that's, that's a, a 20 plus percent decline in job openings. Understood. Yeah, they, I, we're going to have something else we're going to be listening to a little bit today. Jerome Powell, he's not on the rubber chicken circuit. He's actually on the diplomatic circle. There's a big convention on central bankers going on over in Portugal today, and he's set to take the stage about noon talking about uh, our progress toward 2% inflation and our progress toward normalization of the economy. I got to believe that folks are going to be listening to the stream on that one as well. We normally get all of the bank Fed presidents, the local presidents, out talking. This time we're going to actually have Gerald uh, J. Powell talking to a bunch of other movers and shakers as far as where he thinks the economy is going. And I suspect he'll be a little bit more candid with his fellow central bankers than he is with the local Rotary clubs. Uh, it could very well be. And the other thing we have to look at too in the whole world. Uh, inflation zone is that Eurozone reported their inflation came in at 2.5 percent. Now that sounds really good, but it's kind of like uh, I think it was the UK a couple weeks ago reported their core inflation, however, uh, um, did not move. It stayed consistent at 2.9 percent, which is still above uh, where everybody wants it to be, and it was more than the expectation of 2.8%. So um, overall, their inflation is going down, but that core number still seems to be uh, a sticking point. And with all the interest rate decreases going on over in the European community, I'm starting to wonder if those birds are throwing in the towel and saying, oh, hell, we'll settle for 3% instead of 2 <laughs> I, I just, just a guess, but, you know, if I got 2.9% inflation and I'm giving all kinds of lip service to 2% and then I cut interest rates, I'm saying I'm throwing in the towel. At the very least, that sure is the message I'm getting. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, hey, we've been talking about real estate and construction. I did see <laughs> this article, um, and I know you'll feel sorry for them uh, in Manhattan, that, uh, that the, it's become a buyer's market. Uh, the inventory has grown. It's at, it's actually over the 10-year average now. There's like 8,000 uh, units available in Manhattan right now. The average is about 7,000 at a time. Um, and their prices have come down 2 or 3%. So you, you, you can go buy a couple now, Dave. I've got a really big violin for those guys. That kind of harkens back to uh, something that happened while you were out of town last week. Before you left, we'd mentioned we had this great big bubble of commercial real estate loans outstanding. Last week, the Federal Reserve res uh, uh, in in released that they had done a stress test on the big banks as to if we had a 40% drop in the value of commercial property, could our big banks survive it? And they said, everything's fine, everything's fine. The big banks would be able to support the economy. I noticed that the report only talked about big banks, though. When you see numbers like that kind of vacancy rate and that kind of uh, sales price number going down, it does kind of make you sit up and take notice for the regionals, doesn't it? It does, Dave. It does, you know, because, hey, we, we depend so much on our banking industry, and we've already seen it uh, take a hit back in 07, 08, and so we know what that can feel like, and, and I would hate to go through that again. I mean, that would just be uh, devastating to our economy. It's going to be interesting when earnings season starts next week and we start hearing about what the bad debt reserve figures look like on the big banks. Into next week, I think we start seeing a lot of those numbers coming out, don't we? 
Uh, I'm not sure. My tip sheet that used to give me that has uh, disappeared. So uh, I got to find a new uh, new way to, to look out my calendar, my earnings calendar, and see when things are coming out. I remember seeing a tidbit thing. It was supposed to start toward the end of next week. I don't know whether that's just the stragglers at the beginning or the big financial flood. Uh, other tidbits out there, Roaring Kitty is turning Chewy into a meme stock now. He's ended up buying a 6.6% stake in Chewy, and as a regular customer of that company, I'm kind of saying, oh, no, not not there, please. <laughs> and he is getting hey. sued, though, for alleged market manipulation around ga- around GameStop. Gosh, what a surprise, right? you got to think. I mean, what is he thinking? I mean, how, how can he not get – um, get threatened with litigation about market movement, just getting out there and doing what he's doing. Um, and he's made his money on basically GameStop and, and AMC probably. And, and now he's venturing into other areas, but, but the amount of money he's made to, to be able to come up with 6% ownership of, of uh, stock of Chewy, I mean, that's a pretty substantial uh, undertaking. I, 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 you just made the point I've, that's been going through my mind. I mean, you know, okay, you find you tank a stock, buy a whole pile of it, and then go on Reddit and throw the unwashed hordes in, buying the heck out of the stock, and then you get fat and sassy off of it. If they can throw Martha Stewart in jail for a call off of a friend of hers saying they got a new deal out, I mean, this guy ought to be up the river for life. I, yeah, I agree. I agree. I'm not <laughs> sure how. I'm not sure how they've not taken him out yet. Uh, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me either. Uh, tidbit out there, and we'll uh, get to the point where there might be some validity to this. Uh, I've got an analyst saying the oil could go up to $90 a barrel this year because they see no hope for any kind of a solution in the Middle East. We're still throwing rocks at each other between Gaza and Israel, and the more that happens, the more involved Iran gets, and the more messed up the oil market gets. I'm really not looking forward to $90 a barrel oil, but this morning futures – kind of give us an idea that we're on that road. Yeah, it really does. I mean, coming in this morning or going home yesterday, I think I saw gas at, at 356 or 358 at the at the local market there on my neighborhood. Absolutely. We haven't talked all that much, and I didn't get a chance to ask, is anybody reporting any uh, earnings this morning, or do we go straight to the futures? Yeah, straight to the futures. I don't have any earnings this morning yet. <laughs> Normally, I ask ahead of time. This morning, I forgot. Uh, general modest green day yesterday on Wall Street, 45 minutes before we opened. I saw some red when I checked earlier. How are we doing? Hey, we still got mostly red today, Dave. The uh, Dow is down a third of a percent. The S&P 500 is getting down close to a half a percent. And the NASDAQ 100 is down about six-tenths of a percent. Uh, the Russell 2000 is down about three tenths after being down about nine tenths yesterday. So uh, continuing to fall for them. On the other side of the coin, the commodity side, we see silver up three quarters of a percent, still under 30, though, at twenty nine dollars and eighty two cents an ounce. Uh, we've got uh, gold down a tenth of a percent, still at twenty three thirty six an ounce. Crude oil, as you alluded to, trying to get to 85, it's up 1% right now to $84.21 a barrel. Well, poo on all that. Looking across the ponds, the Asian rim market was profoundly mixed. Uh, The 500-pound gorilla, the mainland Chinese markets, were off by almost a percent. That kind of dragged a bunch of other ones down. The Hong Kong market was up by a quarter on balance, call it a generally negative day. Over in Europe, they're following our futures and saying, ruh-roh, Overall, European indexes are down about three-quarters of a percent halfway through their trading day so far today. How do I get a hold of you to be able to make my retirement work anyway, Philip? This stuff's scaring me. <laughs> Dave, that's why I created the core retirement design to help people design that retirement they always dreamed of. They can give us a call at 863-382-0037 to schedule your core retirement analysis. And then join us this weekend for the Statler Financial Radio Show, 6 a.m. and noon on Saturday, 10 a.m. Sunday morning on Highlands News Talk 730 and 95.3 FM. And back here tomorrow morning to see what might be messing with our money tomorrow morning, the same time here on Light. Do appreciate it. Have a good day, my friend. All right, man. Talk to you later. Thank you, and welcome back. It's 105.7 Light FM and Statler Financial Services, Philip Statler. Hey, folks, again, I want to thank you for joining us today. 
have a great rest of your day, and I look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye now.